In section 3.7, we'll look at polynomial and rational inequality. So these are the guys that have these involved with them. Uh, we've already looked at these before when we found critical points and tested the regions on the real line. Now we'll do them both algebraically and um, graphically. So remember the steps from before when we looked at um, quadratic inequalities. We would say get a zero on one side. So you'd basically have ax squared plus bx plus c greater or equal to zero, for example, or less than or less than or greater, less than or equal to. Then we would say factor and get critical points. So that was the world where we assumed that the inequality was really just an equation, and then we factored and popped out our solutions. Then we said test regions and keep positive or negative, depending on what the problem was asking. So those were the steps, and we're going to repeat those steps when we look at polynomial inequalities first, then we revisit a quadratic inequality. So for example one, I'm going to get a zero on one side. I like my leading coefficients to be positive, so I'm going to move the three to the left. Then I'm going to pretend this is an equation, and I'm going to factor and pop out my solutions. So I have x minus 3, x plus 1 it looks like, this one pops out a 3, and this one pops out a negative 1. These guys are my CP, my critical points. So I'm going to go to the real line and put those there. So we have, let's do it over here. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4 let's say. So I have one of my critical points is negative 1, the other one is 3. And so my real line is divided up into three regions, 1, 2, and 3. And the easiest one to test is the middle one. So if I test x equals 0 in my problem, which would be, I guess, this standard form that I put it in, I'm going to get just a... Uh, Zero, negative 3, I guess, if I put it in, right? 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So this region is always going to be negative. If I go to the right and let's say I test x equals 4 in my original um, expression on the left, I'm going to have 4 squared minus 2 times 4 minus 3. That's 16 minus 8 minus 3. That's going to be a 5. So that's going to be a positive region. And let's say I want to test that x equals negative 2 on the left. That's going to be negative 2 quantity squared minus 2 times negative 2 minus 3. That's a positive 4, another positive 4, minus 3, and that 2 pops out a 5. So I have a positive region here. And my original inequality was saying, hey, keep the stuff that's greater or equal to 0, which means stuff that's greater or equal to 0 has to be positive stuff to be bigger or equal to zero. So my solution is this positive region and that positive region. In other words, our final solution for this inequality is from negative infinity to negative one. And I'm going to include that because of the equal sign in the problem. So the equal sign says include that union three inclusive all the way to infinity is my final solution if I apply the methods that we did in the past. Um, now I want you also to think about this graphically now that we've looked at polynomials in detail. Graphically if I think about this it's just y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3 which is a parabola that opens upward. We know that from before. We also know that this parabola has x-intercepts that we already found, which happen to be those critical points, 3 and negative 1. So if you think of the graph at 3 and negative 1 are the x-intercepts, and the graph opens up because it's a leading coefficient positive. Now, this problem is saying, hey, when are the y values positive? Because the inequality is greater or equal to 0, it's saying, when are the y values positive? And the y values positive based on the graph are over here and over here. Those are the only two regions where the y values are positive. 
the region in the middle dips below and the y values are negative. And notice that coincides with my real line. The y values are positive when x is less than negative 1 and also when x is greater or equal to 3 because it wants us to include the zeros as well. So whether I look at the graph to pull the solution or I do testing the regions on the real line, I get the same solution. Algebraically, you're testing regions looking for positives and negatives. Graphically, you're just paying attention to what the parabola is doing and saying, hey, when is the parabola greater or equal to zero? So you're going to have to pick this region and this region and then give me the x values that create those regions. Let's go to the next example. Uh, this is also a polynomial inequality and it's even um, better because it's already factored for us. So I don't have to do step one and get a zero on one side and factor all that business is done. Zero is on one side and the left side is already factored. So I'm going to pretend this is an equation and pop out my critical points. So this one pops out a negative four, this one pops out a two when I set it equal to zero, and when I set the last one equal to zero, it looks like it gives me a negative three halves or 1.5. So my critical numbers, and I have my real line that I'm gonna go test. So I have zero, one, two, three, four, five, let's say one, two, three. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Critical numbers, I guess negative 4. Let me do a better job with that. All right, so we got negative 4 as a critical number, 2 as a critical number, and negative 3 halves, which is negative 1.5 as a critical number. So now I got four regions to worry about. And I go to each region and I test a number. So region 3 is the quickest, easiest one. If x is 0 and I put it in my factors on the left, I'm going to see if it's positive or negative. So if I put 0 in, all the x's, I'm going to get 4 times negative 2 times a 3, I guess. That's going to give me a negative number. So region 3 is negative. Region 4, let's test x equals 3. If I test x equals 3 in my original expression on the left, I have 7 because I have a 3 plus a 4 in the first parentheses. Then 3 minus 2 is a 1. Then 2 times 3 is 6. 6 and 3 is 9. So whatever that is, who cares? It's going to be a positive number. Then I'm going to go to region 2, and let's say I'm going to put negative 3. Um, for my x's. So my first parenthesis, negative 3 in here is where I'm going, of course, in all of these. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. Then I have times the next parenthesis, negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. Then 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, plus 3 is a negative 3. Negative times negative is a positive, it looks like. And then in the last region, I'm going to pick negative 5. So I have negative 5 plus 4, which is negative 1, times negative 5, and negative 2 is negative 7. And 2 times negative 5, negative 10, plus a 3 is a negative 7, 2, I guess. That's these two make a positive, and then times a negative gives you a final negative region. Now, in this case, they alternate, but they don't necessarily have to alternate. If I change the multiplicity of one of them, for example, if I take two, x minus 2 factor, and switch that into a square, when you do testing the regions, you'll see that on the two sides of 2, the signs don't alternate. So the multiplicity has to do with whether the signs alternate or not. If the multiplicity is even, it doesn't alternate on two sides of that output or that critical point. And if the multiplicities are odd, you alternate on the two sides. So we have our... Um, Regions labeled, this problem is asking us to give me the stuff that's less than zero. So I'm looking at stuff less than zero, and stuff that's less than zero has to be negative numbers that's less than zero. So this is a solution, and that's part of the solution for me. And since there is no equal sign, no equal sign, I'm going to leave those open not include them. So negative infinity to negative 4, leave parentheses open since there's no equal sign. Union, 
The next part picks up at negative 1.5 or negative 3 halves and goes all the way to 2. So that is my final solution and in interval notation for this inequality. Again, all we did was pop out critical points, test regions, and keep the sign that the problem required me to keep. Now let's think about this graphically. If I think about y equals x plus 4, x minus 2, 2x plus 3, when we talked about polynomials, we said only the leading coefficient tells you the end behavior. So that's x, x, and 2x. That's going to be 2x to the third plus a bunch of other terms when I multiply it out. And remember, since it's a positive leading coefficient, it's going to basically look like that and that when I graph that polynomial. And since I already have it in factored form, those critical points already give me the x-intercept. So negative 4 is one of them, 2 is the other, and negative 3 halves is the other one. And since they all have odd multiplicity, they're all going to get crossed, if you remember, from polynomials. So basically I have this getting crossed, and then this getting crossed, and then that getting crossed, and completing the graph like that. I can see that on my TI, or just quickly use end behavior and zeros to see what that third degree polynomial will look like. Now, since the original problem was saying, give me the stuff, or keep the stuff that's less than zero in the original inequality given, I'm looking at the y values that are less than zero. So the y values less than zero, which means negative y values, happen in this little piece and in this little piece. Now, pay attention to the x values. All the x values that give that bottom piece is over here, that's x is less than negative four, and it's also in this region when x is between negative three halves and two, which is exactly what we got when we looked at the real line. The solution was to the left of negative four and between negative three halves and two. So basically, visually on the graph, all I'm looking at is, hey, when does my graph dip below the x-axis and make the y values negative? Those y values negative happen when x is between negative infinity and negative four, and they also happen when x is between negative three halves and two. So whether you're looking at the 2D version of the graph on your TI or by hand, or whether you're looking at testing the real line, you're going to get the same solution for that inequality. We'll go ahead and look at part C in the next video because it involves a little bit of work ahead of time to get it factored and set to zero.